Hello everyone, NeuroGal MD here. Welcome to my first episode of No Brainer, a series in which I discuss interesting neurological cases that I have seen and cared for in my clinical practice. This is for anybody who wants to learn more about what I do as a neurologist, and also for anybody who's interested in disorders that can affect the brain. This is my pilot episode, so I will only continue this series if you want to see more of it. If you end up liking this video, please be sure to hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Eddie, who inspired the title of the series. No Brainer seems like the perfect title for a series about various brain disorders. I'd like to also mention that this series is inspired by and dedicated to a famous neurologist that inspired me to become a neurologist myself, Dr. Oliver Sacks. He has written plenty of books about neurological disorders, the most famous one being The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. That book inspired me to go into neurology. So without further ado, let's discuss our first no-brainer case. Today we're going to talk about a 54-year-old female who was brought to the hospital by her husband for confusion that started that same morning. The night prior, she was in her normal mental state, had no neurological deficits. She only complained of a mild headache. The following morning, however, her husband had trouble waking her up. Once she did wake up, she was extremely lethargic and confused and complaining of a severe headache. Her husband also noticed that she wasn't paying attention to objects in her left field of vision. When she arrived at the hospital, her blood pressure was extremely elevated at 198 over 110. A normal blood pressure recording is less than 120 over 80. Her heart rate was elevated, but she was breathing normally and she wasn't febrile. Her neurological exam revealed a woman who was lethargic and not following commands. She also had a visual field deficit in which she could not see anything in her left field of vision. In medical terminology, we call this homonymous hemianopia. She had a prolonged seizure on her first day of being in the hospital, and so she was given a powerful emergency seizure medication called lorazepam to stop the clinical seizure activity. She also had an emergent CT scan of her brain, which showed dark areas. In medical terminology, we call this hypodensities in the back of her brain. This region of the brain is where the occipital lobes are located. She also had an MRI of her brain, which showed swelling in the occipital lobes. What is the mystery diagnosis? The correct answer is posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, also known as PRESS. PRESS is a neurological condition that's characterized by vision disturbances, altered consciousness, headache, and seizures. It can also present with other focal neurological deficits such as focal weakness or numbness. It's characterized by swelling of the brain, usually in the occipital or parietal lobes or both. Like I said before, a common feature of press involves vision disturbances. For instance, my patient presented with a loss of vision in her left visual field. This is because press commonly affects the occipital lobes. The occipital lobes are the primary region in the brain where vision is processed. People who are at risk of developing press include people with chronic high blood pressure. This is probably the most common cause of press that I've seen in my clinical practice. Other people who are at risk for developing press include those with kidney disease, cancer, autoimmune disease, people who have had organ transplants, and pregnant women with high blood pressure. Immunosuppressant medications also increase the risk for press. Although the specific cause of press is not exactly clear, it's likely related to damage to the blood vessels in the brain, caused either from extremely elevated blood pressure, medications, or a local inflammatory response. This damage causes blood vessels to leak fluid into the surrounding areas, and this in turn leads to swelling. For reasons that are not completely clear, the occipital and the parietal regions of the brain are more susceptible to the blood vessel damage involved in press. Occasionally, people with press will develop cerebral hemorrhage, that is, bleeding in the particular region of the brain affected by press. We usually treat press by addressing the underlying cause, so lowering the blood pressure if high blood pressure is the culprit, or stopping the medication that is thought to cause press if it's thought to be drug-induced. Symptoms and damage from press are usually reversible if the symptoms are caught and treated early. Symptoms usually resolve within days to weeks. 
uh, but occasionally symptoms do not completely resolve. In my patient's case, because she presented with elevated blood pressure and had a known history of high blood pressure, it was determined that high blood pressure was causing her case of press. Because she was persistently confused after her clinical seizure, we were concerned about non-convulsive seizures. Non-convulsive seizures are seizures that do not physically manifest as seizures, so the person won't be shaking all over, uh, they could just be confused, and the only way to detect a non-convulsive seizure is with an electroencephalogram or an EEG. So we hooked her up to an EEG and sure enough, she had non-convulsive seizures. We started her on an anti-seizure medication and lowered her blood pressure. Thereafter, her seizures completely resolved and her confusion improved as the days passed. She was discharged one week after she was admitted to the hospital with only a mild left visual field deficit, which resolved by the time I saw her in clinic for follow-up, she had a repeat MRI three months after her hospitalization, which showed resolution of the swelling. So there you have it, folks. Posterior reversible encephalopathy, or PRESS, is one of the many neurological disorders that I've seen. If you want me to review more interesting neurological disorders like this, please hit the like button and comment. This is a trial run, so I really wanna know if you wanna see more of this. This is NeuroGalMD. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.